Hey guys, so um, just a quick video today. Um, I've just done a live um, video inside my free um, support group, the Go To Physio uh, Blueprint Training uh, Facebook group. It's attached to this page, and I'm just saying to them that things have been a little bit wild, um, a little bit busy over the last uh, six months, really. So since well, God, it's nearly eight months now. Since I started working with England Rugby um, Union, um, especially in, in June, um, late June, that I haven't spent enough time in that group. I haven't um, actually posted, I haven't supported uh, therapists outside of the mentorship community um, enough. And so what I want to do now to make that right is every week, um, inside my free facebook group um, i'll be posting uh, weekly content inside there so you'll get an insight into where my head's at in terms of my thought process what i'm looking at clinically what i'm thinking the connections that that i'm putting together um, for instance i had um, a rugby league player come up to me today with a tricky uh, ankle case that's been ongoing for a year and a half so again um, over the coming days, I'll be sharing um, my thought process with that case, what I'm looking at, why why I'm looking at, the way I'm looking at so important, as well as the, the clinical reasoning behind it. So really good week on the mentorship this week. Uh, the Mentorship Plus group and alumni groups in particular, uh, there's been a lot of really good questions. Uh, you can really tell that the January class are starting to grasp the concepts now and you know the, by the quality of the questions that are coming through, um, you can tell that people are starting to understand the, con uh, the concepts and the content, which is really, really uh, good, good for us, obviously. Um, there was a great coaching call this morning with 22 therapists live on that at 6 a.m. this morning. Um, Dave Sullivan took the, um, the coaching call this morning. He's back from the England camp today, um, ahead of the, the big game this weekend, England-Ireland. So Dave took the call. There's some really good questions on the call again. Um, and it was really interesting, actually, and really good because at the moment on the mentorship, there's a lot of different therapists from different backgrounds. We've got a lot of American therapists, a lot of English Irish, a lot from Australia. Um, and obviously there's different things that are big in those areas the, and in different areas at the moment. For example, in, in America, obviously McKenzie is quite massive and, and everywhere else, but particularly in America. Uh, and we're able to discuss kind of the pros and cons of that um, and, and just kind of dis discuss the higher level thinking about why certain things work, maybe why certain things uh, don't work so well, why sometimes things are repeatable, it works with one patient, doesn't work with the next patient and trying to just troubleshoot those things a little bit, develop some higher level clinical reasoning and just improve all of our systems at the same time. And I mean, you can't beat having 22 therapists all striving for clinical excellence on a, a live call at 6 a.m. in the morning, just troubleshooting all of these problems a little bit early, but uh, it's, uh, it's great to have that. We've gone, we've made a commitment to look at the upper limb the exact same. Now, there's two, two or three very, very important muscles that, um, have to do a great job in transferring energy and that is the biarticular muscles so just like the hamstring and quad and the gastroc are very important to transfer energy in the lower limb the bicep tricep and the wrist flexors are very very important as well and we look at the the anatomical makeup of these tissues the flexors they've got long tendons and again we know you know developing as babies etc when we are crawling these tendons are designed to transfer energy okay to make us more efficient to um, to use less energy to do the same tasks okay if you want to talk about energy efficiency so what we do in the mentorship is we focus on allowing these tissues to do their job to give the deltoid time to contract build tension just like we delay knee extension with the hamstring and the quad and the gastro co contracting to allow the glute max to time to develop tension to do work, we do the exact same with the delta. Best way I've heard that described and the way I like to describe it to patients, I think it was uh, Greg Lehman who I heard describe it like this, where like the, the, the scan results sometimes are they're a bit like kindling for a fire. So kindling is on a fire and needs a spark to get going and the, the scan results are not irrelevant, but you know they're, they're part of the whole clinical picture, but they're not the, the, the cause of things. So. You know, you can have you can have this prolapses, you can have uh, degenerative changes and have absolutely no pain. So if they're getting pain and something's becoming irritated, the higher level question now is, okay, well, what else is happening now that's causing that area to get overloaded and then become irritated as well? Does that make sense, Harry? I know you're live on the call. Yeah, Shane, uh, I hope, can you hear me? Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. Um, that that all makes total sense to me. And like one of the, the, the difficulties I have with this guy, this guy is a kind of is a good friend of mine, and he's um, he'd be a keyboard warrior. He's Doctor Google is a great friend of his as well. <laughs> so that, you know, it's, it's trying to convince him just what you're after saying. Uh, yeah. You know that the MRI scan is normal enough for a 60 year old. It everything is not so bad, but it's now to try and get him to buy into this into me getting you know assessing him to see exactly you know what is causing the problem so yeah i i, I take exactly what you're saying and and, and i just have to work on, on trying to get through to him so second question and um, this is uh i think that that's very popular lately the, the bffo or blood flow restriction technology um, and I think this is something that, that definitely has a lot of value, especially post-op as well, um, to, to minimize muscular atrophy. The key thing though is where it fits in the system. So, you know, I wouldn't be putting it on straight away post-op. What's most important, first of all, is I want to get them tolerating, let's say, isometrics. I want to get them to be able to do like a 20, 30, 40% contraction. And I'm going to have steps that they need to pass first before I'm going to take them up to that level. And then when I take them up to that level, I can use the, the blood flow restriction technology to, to like super maximally load them in that position. So I think it's really, really good stuff. It's really good technology, but we, it needs to fit into the system in a certain place. And, and definitely the, there, there's place for it, but I think there's, there's more important things we need to do first, and then we can start to use some of that stuff. Um, or I think sometimes when these new things come out, it can be very, and you know, the research is, is, is behind it and stuff, it can be very tempting just to, to use it with everybody straight away. But I think it's very, very important that we, we have the right step-by-step -step progressions and we use it appropriately.